I'm very pleased to be able to announce my first squad as England manager and a very important one of course because it's a squad that's going to be going to the European Championships. I won't deny that it's not been an easy squad to put together and it's taken a lot of thought and occupied a lot of my thinking time but I'm pleased with the result. I'm pleased with the squad that I've eventually arrived at. I think it's a well-balanced squad. I think it's a a squad which does take into account the fact that a, a lot of the players in the squad are players who have helped qualify England for this tournament and therefore deserve a chance to play in the final tournament. But I've also added, as you've seen, one or two players perhaps who are new to the squad and who may turn out to be very important players for me going forward. I'm also pleased to announce that Stephen Gerrard will, will captain the team in my opinion, he's the man who merits this award, if you like, or this distinction. Um, I know him, of course, as a player. I know him as a person. I know how committed he is to the England cause. And he was delighted last night when I, when I told him of my decision. And I shall be counting on him, of course, to help me as much as he possibly can to build the type of team unity and the type of environment that I think is going to be very necessary for us to, to thrive in an important tournament. So that's what I have to say on the subject, and uh, it's now up to you, Nick. Roy, hello. Um, hello, Nick. Hello. Obviously, we're going to talk about the 23 that are going to Poland and Ukraine, but could I just start by asking you about Rio Ferdinand and the reasons behind his omission, please? Well, it's purely a football indecision. I mean, I, Rio is a man that I both respect as a, as a player and as a person. I don't know him well personally, but of course, like everyone in the room, I've, I've seen enough of him over the years to realise what a fine football player he is and what a good person he is. But I had to make a football indecision. I had to decide on the basis, basically, of what I've seen in, in, in recent months and, in particular, influenced also to some extent by the fact that Rio hasn't played so much since the World Cup and has only played once for England in the last year. And on, fo on a footballing basis, I wanted, I wanted people like Jones in the squad because he helped balance out for me at, at right back in the absence of Kyle Walker. So it was purely a footballing decision and uh, it was a hard phone call to make, of course, because you, you, you hate to disappoint people, but I can only hope that Rio can accept my decision and understand that it is based purely on football and nothing else. Nothing to do with the sort of John Terry issue. You were no, talking nothing. in terms of sitting no. them both down at one stage, but you, you clearly didn't feel you needed to. Then. Well, I've spoken to both of them, of course. So I mean, I had to do that, and I left the decision to talk to both of them until after the final game of the season because there may not have been a need to talk to either of them if there had been an injury or whatever. But uh, in in the last couple of days, I've spoken to both of them and uh, explained to them, you know, why I came to the decision. Okay, let's talk about those that are in. Um, Alex Hoxlade, chamberlain and John Ruddy are the two uncapped players. Tell us uh, what prompted you to, to pick them, Roy. Well, I start with John, I suppose, who's a, a slightly more obvious one. You know, you, you all understand that we don't have so many English goalkeepers to, to choose from. Um, but I think John's had an excellent season with Norwich. I think Norwich have had an excellent season. They've surprised everybody. They've, uh, they've really taken the Premier League by storm. He's been a very, very important player in that team. So when I was looking for someone to back up Joe Hart, who's the obvious number one, and Robert Green, the obvious number two, I turned to John Ruddy and hopefully he's happy. I haven't spoken to him actually, but hopefully he's happy with that one. And with Alex Oxford-Chamberlain, I think he's a very, very exciting player. He's, he's uh, given one or two performances which have made quite an impression upon me, not least of all when Arsenal played Milan at the Emirates Stadium and I was there live and saw how well he dealt with Pirlo and Ambrosini in the centre of midfield. And the fact that he's that type of player who can play wide or play central also affected my decision as well as, of course, the fact that for the future I think he's one we're going to be seeing a lot of it if he can continue as he started. It sounds like it might have come as a, a real surprise to John Ruddy because uh, we gather he's due to get married on the day of the Belgium game, I think. He still is, I think. I hope he is. I mean, he... Uh, when he was told, um, he offered to postpone the wedding, but I, I said to him not to do that. Personally, I think it's a bit dangerous to cancel weddings at the last moment. You live with a wife for a long time. Missing a football match is not maybe the end of the world. So I suggested to him that we'd, we'd deal with the Belgium game with, with Joe Hart and with Robert Green, and uh, we'll welcome him back to get on the plane to, 
to Poland when we go. Andy Carroll is in the, in the squad. Did he make a, a late charge, as it were, with his uh, performances towards the end of the season? That's probably, probably the best way of putting it. I mean, obviously, in, in a, he, he's a different type of player to the other players in the squad. He, he has that ability, of course, to hold the ball up. He has that aerial ability, which is very useful. But he also, of course, has the ability to, to make the runs behind defenders and, and use his, his strength and his power. And uh, I spoke to Kenny at some length about him because I don't know him particularly well as a person. And like everyone else, one can easily be uh, tricked by perceptions of players and what you hear or read about them. But Kenny was absolutely uh, convinced about the player's ability and his, and his uh, personality and his uh, seriousness as a professional. And when I heard that, it, it meant I had no further reservations. Did you have any reservations about taking John Terry in case he might be considered a, a disruptive influence because of the, the court case that's still hanging, hanging over him? If we take the court case first of all, I mean, that's obviously very unfortunate for him, but at the moment we must emphasise still that he, he's an innocent man until such time as he's proven guilty. And as a result, my decision with John Terry was once again based purely on footballing matters. I was given a free hand as to the squad I, I, I picked. I realised that when I selected him, there would be people who would raise their eyebrows, but that's the decision that I've made, that's the decision I shall live with. And uh, I believe that John Terry, especially in the latter part of the season, has played very well. I know you're going to come back with me and say he shouldn't have done what he did at Barcelona, but I'm looking over a longer period than that. I think he's played well, I think he's played an important part in Chelsea's FA Cup final victory, an important part in their reaching the Champions League final. And so, therefore, I selected him because I think he's the man for the job. I'm hoping and believing that he'll help us win matches. 